Hey, greetings YouTube performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view and today we are going to be opening up and checking out the magnesium. I'm going to go over some of its common problems, flaws, uh, what have you. And before I get started, I want to say really if it's under warranty, the newer ones of these have a one year warranty. Some of the older ones had a seven year warranty. Definitely bring it to your authorized Oryx store. There are plenty of them still around. Some of them might not say Oric on the front of them anymore, but there are plenty of authorized Oric service centers. So check your local listings uh, before really futzing with this because you could be voiding your warranty. Uh, also, I'm not responsible if you take this apart and break it. Um, just, just full disclaimer there. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is separate the handle from the body. And there is a gasket under here. So, and you'll have to give it a good tug and boom, it's been separated. Now we're going to go ahead and set all this aside. One thing you'll probably want to do in here is with a flashlight, you'll want to just check in here, make sure nothing's caught in the fan chamber or anything like that. If I turn my flashlight off. So let's get to the rest of it right here. And if you don't have a magnet tray, I highly recommend you buy one. They're super useful for this sort of thing. So the first thing we're going to do is pull these two screws out, which are different from the rest. And the base plate will rock off. Now we can get to the brush roller. Um, I'll put a link below to what parts I can. Um, but your brush roller should spin freely. You can get to one end cap. You cannot remove this other end cap. And keep in mind, this is a wear item you want to change uh, probably every two to four years on this machine. Now, buildup like this is pretty normal inside. There's a really quick way to get rid of that. Uh, check out my review on the central vacuum if you're wondering what kind of machine I'm using. As you can see, that gets it really, really clean. This vacuum I just used is far more powerful than this thing. So let's set this aside. Now this cover is going to come off and there is a tool orc actually put out for doing this and then they stop making them. They're kind of hard to get. So if you look right here, there's a lock and unlock and an arrow. So you're just gonna give this like an eighth of a turn unlocked and now the covers off now we can get to the belt the belt's a long life belt this should last the life of the cleaner sometimes debris does get stuck in this belt um, so that's just something to keep be mindful of the next thing is there is this little filter that it breathes through this can be rinsed off cleaned occasionally um, no big deal if it gets lost now on the other side we're going to see similar marks as well and you know if you're going to smuggle something this would probably be the place to do it because <laughs> this is completely just an empty cavity uh, that your mama would fit in. Um, so the wheels on these, they always make this weird sound. I have oiled and greased these with uh, no better results. They're always just kind of loud and flimsy. So keep that in mind. Um, with these, but they are replaceable like so. Um, on the other side, just comes apart like that. So <laughs> very, very easy. Now we get to kind of our dicey territory here, which is the rest of the machine. Now older ones, this part would be made out of magnesium, which is highly flammable. It uh, also had a tendency to crack. So they switched to polymer at some point, which seems to be better uh, for most people. And the, the screws are just really in some odd locations, so just pay attention to where they all are. And uh, make sure your, your machine is unplugged as well. 
So the first thing is this cover is just going to come off. This is just a plastic cover and there's only three screws in it. Again, some stuff's in some very weird locations. And we've pulled the screws out there. All right. Next is going to be this cover. And up oh, there we go. So that all comes apart. And now we can touch the motor. Notice there's a circuit board. You notice the indicator light. This is also, uh, yeah, this, this is its own thing. It comes off. It's available separately. This right here, the spring, that's the antenna for the Bluetooth receiver on this board. If you need to change the board, it's right there. Um, but we're going to go a little bit further into the machine because this is something that can happen. People, too, tend to be pretty careless when they vacuum. They forget that this is a direct air machine, which means it's a little bit more fragile than most vacuums. Oh, there's a one hidden under here. Uh, that's what I get for not pulling the board out. All right. So we pull this all out, and now you can see the feed tube. This is a nice urethane gasket. This is not going to rot or go bad in any way. Uh, but this is a felt gasket, and this is something left over from earlier orgs, and this is something that does need to be changed on a regular basis. I'd say uh, after a year or two, that gasket will be shot, so keep that in mind. And now we're able to get into the impeller of the machine and free up if something was to get caught. Now, if you want to change the swivel neck out, now, then you get into some very strange territory. Again, I recommend you would bring this to your professional repair shop. Uh, to do that, but it's attached to the motor through this bolt um, And again once again a Bench vac is going to be your friend So the reasoning for vacuuming the center of that is so that the socket will fit in there and you can assemble the socket like so uh, next, you're going to need your vice grips, your needle nose vice grips. You don't want to grab the part where the belt is. You just want to grab the end of it where the belt's not going to touch. Otherwise, you're going to hate yourself because you'll mar that shaft up and that will be the end of that motor. Uh, oh. Yeah, it's reverse thread, by the way. If I keep in mind. Just see, pull it, pull it off. I've pulled that off, and now with some, a little bit of magic, you can now pop this. Oh, this off right here, and this neck assembly is available separately. Uh, and you want to save this washer off of this fan because the new one's not going to come with that. Um, so if for some reason you crack or break the fan or really jam something up in there, you can buy that separately. The other thing, it's a little bit weird, is this cover serves no purpose. It's just there. It's an, literally an extra piece that they molded in paint uh, for cosmetic reasons. Um, you can adjust the neck by hand right here if you want to take some of that play out. Uh, this one's brand new, just to give you an idea of what's normal. There is a lot of play. And there are felt gaskets that get replaced in here, or you replace the whole neck that is a wear item. Time to start putting everything back together. Uh, make sure your washer and your felt washer are both here. If for some reason the machine had trouble standing up, it, uh, as you can see, uh, has these rough marks here, but the way that this machine stands up is it clicks onto the fan housing and there's a detent here. Either one of these can wear or both can wear at the same time, so keep that in mind. Sometimes you have to replace the fan housing and the detent, uh, which can seem a little bit counterproductive to some people. So let's put the fan housing back on here. And this is kind of basically the opposite of before. And again, I'm just on the end very end of here is where I am clamping the vice grips. We're not clamping them uh, where the belt rides in the middle here. And we are going to just 
turn that by hand. And remember, it's kind of the opposite of what you think it would be. And you don't want to go too hard. Uh, but basically when the machines like this it should turn freely like that uh, As far as you can see the wires are double insulated. It's kind of a nice thing uh, This has to go back This way and the wires have to be on that side of the unit You can take the plastic doohickey out there. It's unnecessary The next thing I'm gonna put back is the cover and I've cleaned everything off the best I can I say that I might, might need just a little bit of a wipe down here, but that's as clean as that needs to be. Uh, and you can see it kind of, the wires kind of go all over on this machine, um, but they, they really should be over here. It's where you want the wires tucked in out of the way. And then you can, after you secure this, then you can push every, the board and stuff back into place. You're going to see that the screws are all basically the same. Really like this. I think TTI did a good job with that. We are going to put the drill on a lower setting. They recommend that you do this part by hand. Uh, I, I say fuck that. I'm very into using my manual clutch drill. If you try to use a drill with an electro clutch though, that's not going to work for uh, this sort of application. Just a little note on that. I'll put this back in. Excellent. Um, so you see everything is right here in the board. We'll just, the board has a, a place for the wires to go underneath, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, very peculiar, peculiar design. The board goes in there. And again, that's your, your radio frequency switch spring. And then this has a little clip just rocks in there and it's just going to rest on here until you put the rest of it together. Don't worry about that. So next we're going to put the cover on. That's going to clip into place. Very simple. You might want to just make sure this is moving freely and we're going to put this cover on right here. And for those wondering, uh, there was actually nothing wrong with this particular unit. This is just taken apart for demonstration purposes. Uh, just just to clarify that so I'm gonna put the rest of the screws in like so and you should have two left over I'll explain those in a minute and again don't over torque these they don't need a lot of torque that one could go up a little bit Uh, with the older magnesium bodied ones, you could torque them a little bit more. You also just want to make sure the gasket is good here, which this one is. Uh, I personally don't find it necessary to take it apart really much farther to do any sort of maintenance or cleaning. I find this to be adequate. You'll see on older magnesium ones, the paint will be worn off in here and the bare magnesium will be exposed. On here now let's put the wheels back on and over here one side with the belt gets this doohickey uh, with the filter so the filter goes in we'll put this in and you can see there's like a groove that everything just sits in uh, it's well the wheel goes on first my bad and oh you can also mix the wheels up it doesn't it doesn't matter on that the wheels have a flat spot that lines up with the flat spot on the chassis here. There we go. Sorry. Now that now that guy goes on. It's like I'm doing something wrong. That's clip clips in, just like so. Uh, and we'll do the belt here in just a second. Let's do the other wheel first. And again, we're just gonna find the flat spot right there. Next, you have these covers. Uh, that are questionable and you're only going to put one of them on and I'll explain that in just a second so we're going to put the side without the belt it's just going to go on and just like I showed earlier 
with the needle nose vice grips, we're just going to do this and that is locked into place. Now some shops and some people might be unfamiliar with how we clean hair and debris off a brush roller, but we use a wire wheel on slow, like so, and just touch the tip of the bristle on there. And you should not be removing any paint when you do this from the roller. Just really, really simple. And that looks new. After you clean your brush roller, now it's time to put it on. And you'll probably guess how we're going to do this. Uh, again, the belt should not need to be replaced. It should be good to go for a very long time. Um, the rollers have a flat side. They're both the same, unlike previous orcs. And what we're going to do is put one side in, partially, like so. We're going to put the belt on. And now we're going to push the roller into place and the roller should just spin freely and the belt should be fairly centered like this and not rubbing on anything. After the belt is installed, now we can do the other cover and make sure it's in the unlocked position when you do that. And the cover should just pop right back on like so. Again, we're gonna take our modified tool that's on. Now the brush roller is like that. Um, stuff does tend to build up on the squeegee. Uh, so I do recommend you give it a good scrub. You can put this on the top rack of a dishwasher as well if you really want to get this clean properly. Mine is not particularly dirty so I'm just gonna wipe it off and call it good. Now the way that this works so you're going to rock this on, and that's, again, a problem that some people uh, have with this. It's on, very, very simple. The last two screws, I do not recommend using the drill. Do this one by hand. Those are just gonna go on there like that. Not too much torque. On older models, these will be finely machined with a grommet. This does not have that being the newer plastic style. So now we have the machine ready to be reassembled, almost. We are going to zip up the bag here. Just to get that out of the way. Now if the zipper is real harsh, you can put a little bit of oil on the zipper as well. A little bit of oil on that zipper will make all the difference. So as we reassemble the back of the machine, we're going to put that on, pull that up as tall as you can. We're going to put the gasket, and you notice all this is clean. You want this clean when you do this. So this guy will end up clipping in there as we push this in, and it 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 is a tight fit right now. It will not be a tight fit after a while. Again, pushing in, gaskets on there, and we're going to just tighten this up. Now, if you have a pair of channel locks or something to really tighten this down, you can do that. Hand tight is not good enough on this. The way I'm going to do it is with a strap wrench. The Auric did make a specific tool for doing this. Uh, like I said earlier, I just don't happen to have that tool. I don't do enough Oryx. So we're just gonna thread our strap wrench on there. If you don't have a strap wrench, uh, I'll put a link below to my tools. It's really a good tool to have. So, all right, it's on there, tight, just like so. And that's really important that you hand tighten that. Now there's one little last bit of piece we're gonna put on there, which is this. This one's not particularly dirty. I'm just gonna vacuum it out. Uh, but if you need to rinse it out, you can rinse it in cold water with some laundry detergent. Just don't put it in a washing machine or hot water. All right, that guy, uh, he's just gonna drop in up here 
and he only goes in one way. There we go. So let's test it to make sure everything is working. High, low. And the bag should puff up a little bit as well when you do that. Now, while we're on the subject of the machine, I want to just show you one other thing. You can take a coin or a very large screwdriver, you can rotate this a little bit, and now you have access to the battery in there. Sometimes these batteries need to be changed. Uh, I find that they're usually good for years on end, but just keep in mind, if for some reason yours won't turn on, that's something to take a look at. The other thing you can do, you can hold this button right here, and then you see it blinks. That resyncs the Bluetooth connection, and now it's on and off. And this shows kind of the radio frequency part of the handle, which is really unique to this vacuum. So if you learned something today, hit the thumbs up button. If you like what we're doing, consider joining our Patreon, and definitely hit that subscribe button. Consider sharing, and have a wonderful day.